Okay, can we start now? Yes, Doc. Yes, okay. Doc. So, good afternoon. So, our topic this afternoon is a little bit uh, technical because we will be talking about healthcare data analytics. No? So, this uh, topic is uh, increasingly becoming a uh, critical component of modern medicine because uh, health, healthcare data analytics help to make evidence-based decisions by deriving actionable insights from a large amount of data. This can include data from electronic health records, uh, research studies, no? So that is why it is becoming critical component of modern medicine. Aside from that, data analytics is also crucial in the development of personalized medicine. So I, I already mentioned that in my previous, uh, previous lecture about the personalized medicine that is the future now of treating patients where treatment plans are tailored to individual patients based on their genetic makeup, uh, aside from that, uh, based on their lifestyle and other factors. We call it personalized medicine. So that is the reason why this uh, healthcare data analytics is very important for you, you know, as a medical, future medical doctor. So understanding and utilizing healthcare data analytics will be, uh, you will be better equipped to serve your patients, contribute to uh, medical community and shape the future of uh, healthcare. So this is our learning objectives for this afternoon uh, to discuss first, discuss the difference between scriptive predictive and uh, prescriptive analytics. No? So the descriptive analytics as the most basic form of uh, analytics, which uh, involves understanding historical data. It gives you information about what has happened in the past. Uh, it will also give you information uh, by analyzing past behaviors for insights on how to approach the future. So that is the reason why it is important to, to know about the descriptive uh, analytics. No? How about predictive? Predictive analytics is a more advanced form of analytics no? that makes uh, predictions about the future based on historical data. This uh, involves uh, many techniques. Okay, for example, data mining, uh, machine learning, mod modeling, and uh, nowadays we are you know, using artificial intelligence to analyze uh, data. Prescriptive, on the other hand, uh, it is most advanced form of data analytics. It uses techniques such as machine learning algorithms. Okay, so that's why we need to understand the difference between descriptive predictive and uh, prescriptive analytics. Okay, big, big data no? uh, refers to extremely large data sets that may be analyzed computationally to reveal patterns uh, that will also give us an uh, idea about the trends and associations. So we need uh, big data no? because uh, it is very important to analyze and to predict what will happen. Okay, so we will also list the limitations of healthcare uh, data analytics. No? So for example, data privacy, uh, data quality, the data integration. So those are the example of uh, the limitations of healthcare data analytics. And then we will discuss the critical role uh, of the electronic health records. Uh, what does it play in the healthcare data analytics? Now, the accumulation of clinical data within electronic health record systems presents an opportunity for 
secondary uses, including uh, quality improvement uh, initiatives and uh, clinical research. So this phenomenon has been propelled by initiatives such as the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health. Uh, so we call it your uh, high tech, uh, the High Tech Act that is in the United States, which provide uh, incentives for the widespread adoption of electronic health record systems. So I already mentioned that here in the Philippines, we don't have that uh, uh, initiatives wherein incentives given to the uh, practitioner, to the physicians for using electronic health record. In addition to the data within electronic health records, there has been a surge in other forms of health-related uh, data. This include uh, genomic uh, sequencing and other biological data that can uh, provide deep understanding of individual health profiles. Uh, we're also seeing proliferation of patient-generated data from uh, wearable sensors, for example, your Apple Watch. You know? uh, we can also collect data from that. You know? Um, that, that monitor uh, different aspects of health. Now, the the field of uh, the, the field dedicated to uh, analyzing and extracting meaningful information from the wealth of data is commonly referred to as uh, data analytics. No? So, this lecture aims to provide understanding of the terminologies used in the fields. No? Uh, what are the uh, potential benefits, no? description of the accomplishment, uh, and uh, we will also discuss the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. No? Of course, there are some challenges in harnessing uh, data analytics in healthcare. Okay. So, uh, um, um, for example, uh, uh, data security and privacy, you know, interoperability of different systems and development of algorithms for complex health data analysis. So uh, harness uh, uh, by given the abundance and uh, diversity of health data, uh, data analytics has uh, the potential to, to revolutionize healthcare. Now, the term analytics is widely used in both healthcare and other industries no, to describe the extensive use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis. Um, explanatory and predictive models and uh, fact-based management, they are example of analytics. So analytics is employed to drive decisions and actions based on insights derived from data. And a well-known definition of analytics states that it involves the systematic use of data and related business insights developed through applied analytical disciplines. So this includes statistical, uh, con contextual, uh, quantitative, no? so those are under your uh, analytics, uh, cognitive, and uh, even Adams, no? Adams and Klein no? proposed three, three levels of uh, analytics application. We have the uh, descriptive, this level focus on standard reporting that describes historical data. No? It involves summarizing and presenting data in a meaningful way to provide insights into uh, past events and uh, trends. So, so I already mentioned this in my uh, introduction, no? the difference between descriptive, predictive, and uh, prescriptive. Now, by employing this uh, analytics at different levels, organizations can uh, gain no? uh, deeper understanding of their data. And uh, if you understand your data, then you can make accurate uh, predictions and uh, optimize their processes and outcomes in healthcare and beyond. So our patients will actually uh, benefit uh, by this 
uh, analytics. Now, predictive analytics is an area of statistic, uh, statistics that uh, involves using existing data to predict future outcomes. Now, in a clinical setting, uh, this can involve using historical patient data to predict future health outcomes, or it can be used to optimize financial outcomes no, by uh, predicting cost and revenues. In the predictive analytics, we often uh, use uh, different data analytics methodologies, one of the core ones being uh, machine learning. No? Machine learning uh, is a subset of uh, artificial intelligence that involves creating algorithms and uh, systems that can learn from data and improve over time. Uh, machine learning uses statistical methods not to enable machines to improve with experience and it's uh, especially effective in the situations where there's a lot of data. Okay, so you are, you are hearing now, uh, in this lecture, you will be hearing more about uh, machine learning. Now, related to machine learning is data, you know, data mining, which uh, involves processing and analyzing large quantities of data to discover patterns or relationships that were previously unknown. Now, this can be used for a wide range of purposes, such as uh, identifying patterns in customer behavior, okay? It can also be used in detecting fraud, no? Or uh, finding correlations in medical data. Another one, the text mining, no? So this is a subfield of uh, uh, data mining, your text uh, mining is a sub, uh, subfield of data mining. Uh, they are, they deals with uh, textual data. It uses natural language processing and machine learning techniques. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the, the, the results is that they will extract meaningful information from unstructured text data. Uh, what are those uh, unstructured text data? For example, emails, you know, social media posts, or patient records. So they are what we call unstructured te text data. And then they will extract from that uh, unstructured data, okay? They will extract uh, data from those uh, emails, social media posts, and uh, patient records to make okay, meaningful information. Okay, now, the term you know, uh, big data <clears throat> is used to describe data, uh, data sets that are too large and complex to handle with uh, uh, traditional data processing software. So the main characteristics of big data are usually described with the four Bs. Okay, what are those four Bs? Volume, velocity, variety and veracity. So these are the, uh, uh, this is uh, how, how you describe your big data. Massive amount of data, speed of data generation and movement, the different types of data that can be processed and the reli reliability of the data. So in short, no, uh, Predictive analyt analytics, we're talking about this one, the predictive analytics, uh, your machine learning, your data mining, uh, text mining, and big data are all related concepts that deal with analyzing and learning from data uh, to make predictions or discover patterns. Now, in a clinical setting, these tools can be used to optimize health and financial outcomes. So far, can you follow, Lars? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Now, data science is a multidisciplinary field no, that uses scientific methods, processes, they're using algorithms, 
uh, and uh, systems. What is the purpose? To extract knowledge and insights from structured. So they are, they are extracting data from structured and unstructured data. So they are getting information from those uh, structured and unstructured data. And uh, digital science requires a blend of skills in uh, three major areas, uh, domain expertise, that's number one, number two, technology, such as computer science and mathematics and statistics. Okay, so uh, one of uh, expert define uh, uh, data science that uh, this uh, uh, scientist is the no host, no, the no host. Uh, the no uh, defines uh, data science uh, that the idea that data science is about generating knowledge, uh, generating knowledge from data. So it involves a uh, wide range of methods to analyze and uh, process uh, data with a goal of what? Of improving uh, methods based on evidence. So it's uh, not just about number. Uh, you know, you just, you know, it's not just about uh, crunching numbers or programming. It's about creating, you know? take note on this. You know? It's about creating uh, meaningful information from raw data. Where do you get the raw data from structured and unstructured data? Okay, so that is the main purpose of this. No? So as for a description of a data scientist, the no-host highlights the hybrid nature of the rule. No? Data scientists need to have strong statistical skills uh, as well as software engineering abilities. So they are expected to be proficient in both fields, which is, uh, of course, uh, quite challenging to enter in this uh, uh, field of uh, work. No? So this is why uh, data science or data scientist is often seen as team effort, where statisticians, uh, data engineers, machine learning experts, and business domain experts, they uh, work together. Now, in practical terms, uh, data scientists must be, might be involved in uh, formulating a challenging uh, business problem, uh, collecting and cleaning the data, choosing or designing the appropriate statistical models or machine learning algorithms, uh, implementing these models efficiently, and then interpreting the output in a meaningful way is very, very, very important. No? They also, of course, need to communicate their findings. To where? To the stakeholders, to clear and understand, understandable manner. Now, the rapid digitization of clinical data has resulted in a data explosion in healthcare. Uh, hospitals and other healthcare organizations now generate massive amounts of data in various forms, you know, ranging from structured, uh, what, 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 when I say structured, what I mean by structured, like uh, images, uh, lab results. So those are example of structured data. And uh, and structured data, those are the clinical narratives and reports that you can find in the electronic medical record. Now, organization like uh, Kaiser Permanente no? uh, manage uh, incredibly large data sets with over uh, 30 petabytes of data for its uh, millions of members. So there is enormous potential for extracting valuable insights for patient care and uh, health outcomes. 
Now, looking forward, no, many healthcare organizations are uh, preparing actually for an increasingly uh, data-centric future. Uh, for example, I will give you an example. The, uh, the American Society uh, of uh, Clinical Oncologies, no? uh, they uh, initiate uh, efforts to, uh, to, to collect data from their patients. No? So they actually designed a uh, comprehensive system uh, intended for clinicians and researchers. So it not only collects electronic health record data, but also applies clinical decision support, no? enabling data mining, visualization, and offering quality feedback. So the role, no, the role of uh, data science, okay, we are talking about this one. Uh, in the context is uh, significant and uh, multifaceted. No? So uh, this involves uh, uh, creating uh, data warehouses that can handle and integrate uh, massive and diverse data. Uh, effective data management strategy are essential to ensure data quality and security. Um, they are also uh, the the ability, you know, the ability to predict uh, future outcomes is crucial in healthcare, where it can help in uh, disease prevention, early diagnosis, and uh, uh, personalized treatment plans. You know, so, uh, because of that, data science uh, can help build predictive models using uh, uh, using uh, machine learning algorithms. You know? So they can already predict. Um, uh, what will be the outcome of the treatment? Uh, data science no, can also uh, can be uh, leveraged to create clinical decision support no, for, uh, that provide clinicians with uh, evidence-based treatment uh, recommendations. Uh, mining mining healthcare data can lead to discoveries that can transform healthcare practices no uh, for example i will give you example real real world data could be used to observe the efficacy of treatments for example treatment for uh, diabetes treatment for hypertension we are using now real world data no uh, and uh, the the reason for that is to uh, in order to uh, direct uh, or to study the diverse patients' uh, populations. Because remember that uh, every patient have different response to a, a certain uh, medications. No? And we can also identify risk factors for diseases. Now, by providing feedback on care uh, quality, uh, data science can help um, identify areas of improvement in uh, healthcare, healthcare uh, delivery, uh, and then uh, leading to enhanced patient outcomes and uh, healthcare system performance. So data science uh, play a transformative role in healthcare, uh, harnessing the power of big data to improve uh, what? To improve patient outcomes. No? Aside from that, to enhance operational efficiency and facilitate medical research and innovation. The, the world's no, expanding uh, scientific literature represents another vast source of data. So this includes uh, numerous uh, journal articles and their underlying data that get published regularly. So, start the those uh, data that are published contributing to the existing knowledge space. The IBM Watson project, which gained notoriety, uh, notoriety for its victory on the TV game show Jeopardy, no, I, I don't know if you are familiar with that, is one notable initiative that has tried to tackle the challenge of processing and making sense of this abundance of information. 
Um, you can you can watch uh, you can actually uh, uh, look or search for this uh, TV show uh, Jeopardy that include the uh, Watson project. No? And Watson is a question answering system powered by artificial intelligence. It was uh, designed to understand and answer complex questions in natural language. Uh, Watson's ability to process massive amount of uh, amounts of information quickly along with its uh, uh, potential for learning and adapting uh, made it a standout in the in the, in the field now. Uh, IBM has since uh, directed Watson's capabilities toward uh, healthcare, uh, aiming to assist clinicians in diagnosis and treatment, uh, planning by leveraging uh, the system's ability to analyze and uh, interpret the wealth of uh, medical uh, literature. For instance, uh, Watson, no? Uh, could uh, quickly scan and analyze thousands of medical journals and patient records to to, uh, to help doctors determine the best treatment options. Okay, so it's now possible. No, uh, Watson can already uh, do that. Uh, however, despite the potential advantages, Watson's deployment in healthcare has also drawn some uh, criticism. And what are the reasons for that? Uh, uh, the key concern revolves around the lack of rigorous, scientifically valid uh, evaluation of Watson uh, capabilities. So in other words, while uh, Watson has demonstrated an uh, impressive ability to consume, process, vast amount of data, its actual effectiveness and accuracy in uh, delivering clinical relevant and safe information okay, remains to be thoroughly evaluated and proven. No? So there's still question if the answer of what's this really correct. Now, the data analytics uh, pipeline outlined by Komar et al. No, involves four main steps. It is a systematic way to structure the process of extracting insights from large amount of data. Uh, one of this uh, uh, way to structure the or to the process of uh, data is the uh, input data sources. So the first step involves uh, collection and collating all the uh, relevant data and you, where you are going to get that uh, data uh, in healthcare and biomedicine. No? So you are going to get that data from healthcare and biomedicine. No? Um, number two, we have the second step is the feature extraction. So this uh, step uh, involves identifying and extracting key pieces of information from the collected data. No? It's a process of uh, organizing and highlighting relevant aspects of the data. So this may involve uh, linking records across different sources using natural language processing to extract and normalize concepts from unstructured data, uh, like for example, uh, medical notes, no? and identifying other patterns or trends in the data. So once uh, features have been extracted, you know, then uh, various uh, statistical uh, inference technique are, and machine learning algorithm can be applied to the data. And then of course, the final step in the pipeline involved uh, producing uh, actionable output, you know, uh, often in the form of predictions, with associated measures of uh, confidence. So this might uh, involve, uh, for example, predicting the likelihood of a patient experiencing a particular health event, such as heart attack or stroke. No? So that, that's why this is very, very important. No? The pipeline provides a systematic uh, framework for healthcare data analytics. No? 
it represents a flow of information from raw data uh, through uh, different processing stages to valuable insights that can be used to guide decision-making healthcare. Okay? So far, can you follow, Kras? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, as the volume of healthcare data continues to grow exponentially, it becomes increasingly important to understand its uh, providence, you know, the origins of the data, and the trustworthiness of it for large-scale processing and analysis. So ensuring data quality, accuracy, and reliability is a critical component of uh, any data analytics processes, especially in healthcare, where decision based on this data can significantly impact uh, patient outcomes. Now, in the context of uh, healthcare, business intelligence refers to the use of processes and technologies to gain timely and valuable insights from business and clinical data. So this could involve uh, using uh, data visualization tools, uh, predictive anal analytics, or other techniques to uh, better understand no, patterns, trends no, of the data, which can in turn support better uh, decision-making and strategic planning. Now, the idea of learning Learning Health System as advocated by the National Academy of Medicine is a further concept that ties into these ideas. A learning health system is, a one, is one that leverages routinely collected data for continuous learning and improvement. Now, in essence, uh, every patient interaction, okay, every procedure, surgical procedure, I mean, no? every test result becomes an opportunity for learning and improvement. Now, this approach can provide different benefits such as better disease surveillance and response, improved targeting of healthcare services, enhanced decision-making, uh, effective misinformation management, uh, harm reduction, uh, error uh, prevention, and of course, advancement in the clinical research. That's why it's very important to, uh, to follow this uh, uh, or to make sure, no, to make sure uh, to understand the origin of the data and the trustworthiness of, uh, uh, of your data that you are trying to analyze. Now, precision medicine is an innovative approach in healthcare that uh, takes into account the complex interactions in biological system. Uh, it actually utilizes uh, large and diverse types of data, which uh, when properly modeled, can provide uh, valuable predictions for diagnosis and treatment. Essentially, precision medicine strives to improve patient care by uh, tailoring treatments based on an individual's genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors. I already mentioned this a while ago no, about the precision medicine. And data science play a very important role in this uh, transformation. It is being used to uh, solve a problem to the uh, uh, we call it one a maker dilemma in medicine. So this dilemma uh, originating from the advertising industry uh, about the difficulty in determining which half of an effort is effective. So in the context of medicine, uh, this could mean no, a one a maker dilemma in the context of medicine, this could mean identifying which parts of a treatment are working and which aren't. So uh, therefore, we can enhance the effectiveness of uh, our treatments. No? Now, the healthcare industry is uh, 
evolving towards a value-based care model, which uh, aims to deliver high-quality care in uh, cost-efficient ways. So this model provides incentives to healthcare organization to streamline and improve patient care. So an important part of this is having a strong uh, information technology infrastructure that can uh, analyze and predict uh, potential excess cost, allowing for more informed and quicker uh, decision making. However, uh, one of the uh, key challenges in healthcare data management is that a single patient often receives care and undergoes test in different settings. For example, they might visit a general physician, uh, get a test at a separate laboratory or radiology center, then see the specialist or be admitted to a hospital. So there are, that, that, were, that is uh, excess cost already. No? So that is what we call a fragmented uh, approach and uh, difficult to compile and analyze all the relevant data about a patient's health and treatment. So to address this, there's a growing need for what we call health information exchange systems. No? So these systems aim to share health data across different healthcare providers, irrespective of their uh, business boundaries. No? So this uh, uh, health information exchange ensure all health professionals involved in a patient care have access to the same information. That's why we are using now, uh, we are advocating the use of this uh, health information exchange system. So I am giving you here an example, no? uh, although again, this is in the United States, so this is a well-known uh, healthcare information, uh, well-known saying in the healthcare informatics, uh, wherein uh, accountable care organization equal uh, health information exchange plus analytics. So this means that an accountable care organization which uh, focuses on providing coordinated high quality care depends on both the ability to exchange health information and the uh, ability uh, or the capacity to analyze this data. No? Uh, this data, we're talking about the data that you get from uh, the laboratory test of your patient. No? Now, machine learning, this is, a, a crucial, this, this is a crucial aspect of data analytics. Uh, enables uh, machine learning enables computer to learn from data. It is uh, heavily used you know, when handling large and complex data sets. So this field merges uh, mathematics and statistics you know, and uh, the computer science, which actually the computer science, uh, they are responsible for the algorithms. You know? particularly with the large volume of data. Now, there are two primary categories of machine learning algorithms. So we have the supervised learning and the unsupervised learning. In the supervised learning algorithms, they are trained on a set of data where the output is already known. No? We call it supervised. And their performance is then tested on the different set of data. So this approach is used to predict specific outcomes. So, so supervised learning, you already know the uh, you already know the output of the machine. No? So for example, an algorithm can be trained on an uh, electrocardiogram no? okay, uh, to learn how to interpret its waves and make a diagnosis. Okay. Another example could be uh, training an algorithm uh, to detect abnormalities on a chest X-ray. Okay. So you know already the outcome, no? the output. No? For the unsupervised learning, it aims to find patterns or groupings within the data where the outputs are not predetermined. 
So it is uh, it is the machine who will tell you about the output. So it's like giving the algorithm a complex puzzle and letting it figure out how the pieces fit together on its own. So machine learning you know, provides uh, powerful tools for analyzing and interpreting large and complex health data sets, which can lead to more accurate diagnosis and uh, better, better patient care. So remember this too, no supervised and the unsupervised learning. Okay, now I'm giving you here a specific example of supervised learning, uh, the use of large data sets like the uh, Framingham Heart Study uh, that can predict individual risk of coronary heart disease. I'm using this actually. Uh, I, I have an app that can predict uh, uh, how many percent that the patient will have uh, coronary artery disease in five years. I, I have an app on that uh, installed in my uh, iPad. So these risk models can be updated and extended as new data becomes available. And such as information about variations in the human genome, this helps in uh, personalizing uh, risk assessment and uh, consequently the treatment plans. Uh, for the unsupervised learning, it is often used to uh, discover new factors that may be uh, related to diagnosis, uh, treatment, or disease prognosis. Okay. So example uh, is your genome-wide association study, which uh, aims to identify specific genome variants associated with certain diseases. No? So this kind of exploration, no, your machine learning, uh, form already the foundation of precision medicine. No? Uh, the goal is to identify disease causes and factors more precisely. And uh, doing so, uh, develop more targeted and uh, personalized treatment. And ultimately, of course, this can enhance uh, patient outcomes and make healthcare more effective and efficient. So I would like to emphasize now that machine learning is a versatile field in uh, use uh, in a different task in uh, data analysis. Uh, so these are the major tasks of your machine learning, uh, classification, regression, clustering. No? For the clustering, this task involves grouping similar items together. This could be used in healthcare to group patients with similar symptoms. No? For example, uh, we have a group of patients who have a cough, okay? And uh, which might, uh, you will have to identify commonalities or patterns in their health profiles. Okay, so all of them have cough. How many of uh, patients patient with cough have heart failure? So what, that's what we call clustering. And then we have the density estimation. This task find the statistical values from the data. Uh, it could be used for instance to uh, estimate the probability distribution of a particular health measurement in the population. And of course, we have the dimensionality reduction. And this involves uh, reducing the number of features or variables in the data uh, to make it easier for you to manage and understand the data. So this is useful in the healthcare setting you know, where you might have data on hundreds of health variables for a patient. And uh, only a few of those variables are important uh, for, for predicting particular health outcomes. And it, that is very important because you can focus on uh, certain variables. No? For example, to determine how many of this patient with uh, uh, three uh, with the uh, polyuria, polydipsia, polypagia really have diabetes. No? So uh, that is what we call dimensionality reduction. Okay, machine learning uses several approaches for different tasks. No? Uh, it's with its uh, unique algorithm. No? Uh, for example, uh, 
you don't you don't need to to uh, know about this but just to give you an idea what are the algorithms uh that you can use in machine learning no? so we have the nearest neighbors they base support vector machines decision trees no okay so this is the most popular the neural networks and deep learning no? and then of course we have the regre regression algorithms we have the linear and the logistic regressions. And these are the steps in machine learning applications. Now, while data analytics can provide valuable insights in healthcare, there are several challenges that uh, need to be considered. Number one, uh, data generated in the routine care of patients may sometimes be inaccurate or incomplete. So this could be due to uh, different factors, including errors in uh, recording, uh, missing information, or inconsistent data uh, entry. No? Number two, uh, data may be transformed for various purposes, such as coding for billing, which might distort its original meaning and usefulness for analysis. Okay, third, this refers to the issue where data might not cover the full history or future of a patient disease. Uh, for instance, the first instance of a disease in a patient record may not uh, represent when it's uh, first manifested, no? or the data may not span a long enough time period. No? So that, that is the, what we call data censoring. Then uh, data uh, from different sources may not adhere consistently to well-known standards. This is the common, uh, common uh, problem that you might encounter, standards. No? So this can make uh, for you uh, difficult to integrate and analyze the data collectively. So these uh, challenges uh, highlight no, the importance of uh, uh, careful data collection, management, and analysis practices in the healthcare uh, settings. So it's crucial you know, to uh, keep these factors, I'm talking about these four, you know, uh, to keep in mind while interpreting the results of data analytics to ensure that conclusions and decisions are based on reliable and meaningful information. Okay, so uh, these are the these are the first slide. These are the key challenges in healthcare data analytics, and these are the challenges in clinical uh, clinical data analytics. Number one, data quality accuracy. Second, fragmented data. And number three, no, I think this is the most important, unstructured data. So because a, a significant amount of clinical data is locked within unstructured text, such as doctor's notes or medical reports. Extracting meaningful information from that unstructured data can be challenging. It can be challenging and time consuming. Okay, so, Another challenge in the uh, clinical data analytics is the usability of structured data, aggregation challenges, and uh, data volume. Now, the use of big data and analytics in the medical research and clinical practice uh, brings opportunities and challenges, okay? According to Boyd and Crawford, okay, uh, one issue is that research questions often lean towards what the data can answer rather than starting with a specific hypothesis. So this implies what, that uh, we could be limited by what our data allows us to investigate. Now, data despite its perceived objectivity, can be influenced by different factors. Uh, challenging the notion of data neutrality, they are also 
argue that bigger data doesn't necessarily equate to better insights. Quality matters more than quantity. Uh, another one, no, the ethical, no, ethical concerns are also significant when using big uh, data. This includes how individuals' data is collected, how individuals' data are being used, and who gets access to those data. So those are the ethical concerns. No? Uh, as well as the data ownership and uh, privileges uh, to use those data are critical. Uh, NEF brings similar concern. NEF is a scholar no, or a scientist. Uh, he also, uh, also brings this up uh, uh, that uh, to the healthcare context, noting that uh, uh, technical, financial, and uh, uh, ethical problems need to be solved before big data can be routinely used. No? So uh, that is the suggestions of uh, NEF, no? that you should all uh, first uh, uh, solve no? the technical uh, concerns, no? financial and ethical no? uh, problems because before you can use big data. Uh, because uh, is it, it is important that you are confident in using this uh, big data in making your uh, research. No? So a specific ethical challenges uh, is the development of uh, what we call bias, no? bias algorithm, no? which might uh, unintentionally uh, favor certain outcomes based on assumptions made during uh, creation. We call it bias, bias algorithm. So you have to identify that if you are making uh, or analyzing big data. So implementing successful data analytics in a healthcare system requires human and technical infrastructures. No? Uh, I'm referring to the stakeholder engagement. No? So all stakeholders, including patients, uh, clinicians, administrators, IT staff, should be involved no, in the process and be supportive of the data analytics uh, initiatives. No? Uh, measures should also be in place no, to protect the right and well-being of patients who, uh, whose data is being used in the research. Okay. Uh, protection of patient privacy, data assurance and quality that is self-explanatory, interoperability of health information system. This is also important because uh, different health information systems must be able to communicate with each other you know, and be able to exchange data that is necessary you know, for compiling a complete and coherent patient health record. Transparency, okay, sustainability, that is uh, uh, self-explanatory also. Okay, uh, Chrome Holtz you know, points out the need for fresh thinking and training models in healthcare, not just for data ana ana analysts and uh, informaticians, but also for clinicians and administrators. No? So this implies that everyone involved in healthcare should have a basic understanding of data analytics and how it applies to their rules. No? Uh, there's also a call uh, for the development of new tools to help healthcare professionals manage and utilize data more effectively, for example, a green button no? could be a tool that helps clinician aggregate data into a local electronic health record. This could mean a tool that makes it easy to collect, no? integrate, and uh, use data from different sources in a coherent and meaningful way. So as a first-year medical student, no? it's important for you to understand that future medical practice will increasingly rely on data analytics and digital tools. 
So acquiring you know, some basic knowledge in these areas will be beneficial for your uh, future careers. No? Now, the field of healthcare analytics, which uh, focuses on using data to improve uh, healthcare delivery, is still relatively young. No? So it is still young. Uh, researchers have began to show that data from day-to-day -day, uh, clinical operations can be utilized to identify uh, crucial scenarios such as uh, patients in clinical conditions or those uh, who have unusually high costs associated with their care. However, no, there's a less evidence currently showing how this data can be directly used to enhance clinical outcomes no, or reduce healthcare costs. So while we are seeing the potential of uh, analytics in identifying areas of concern or interest in healthcare, more research is needed to understand how to translate these insights into actionable strategies that can bring tangible improvement in healthcare delivery. So again, no, for you, it's crucial to understand that while the use of data analytics in medicine holds uh, immense potential, its practical applications are still being explored and developed. So as a future doctor, you will be part of this exciting journey, no? uh, potentially applying data-driven insights in your practice to what? To provide better uh, patient care. No? Uh, Bates, no, another, this is another scientist, uh, proposed some of the most significant potential applications of data analytics in healthcare. Uh, identifying uh, uh, patients with high healthcare costs allows for early intervention strategies. No? So this may include preventive measures, uh, targeted treatments, or enhanced care coordination to improve health outcomes and potentially reduce costs. No? So by predicting which patients are likely to be readmitted, that's another applications of your data analytics. By, by knowing which patient will be readmitted, then healthcare providers can put in place measures to prevent this. Okay, what we call that is what we call prevention. No, this could involve improving uh, post-discharge care, educating patients about their condition, or scheduling follow-up visits. So you can, as you can see now, no, uh, your data analytics is very important. Uh, in the emergency room, no, this is very important. Your data analytics because it can be used to determine the appropriate level of care for a patient. This could uh, involve deciding whether a patient should be admitted uh, or the patient should be discharged or transferred to a different department or facility. This is very difficult when you are in the ER no, to determine uh, which among the patients will be admitted, discharged, or be transferred to another hospital. Another one, no? we, we need to, you have to understand this. Uh, this is why uh, data analytics is very important. Predicting when a patient's conditions is likely to worsen. No? Could you just imagine if you can I already identify, no? when is the time that the condition of the patient will become worsened? If you can do that, then you can allow for timely interventions and adjustments to the treatment plan. So that's the importance of your data analytics. And of course, uh, uh, monitoring for potential adverse events is very important, no? such as medication errors or surgical complications. It will enhance patient safety and improve uh, outcomes. Who cares? Uh, Data analytics very important also for treatment optimization. Okay. 
Now, studies have increasingly utilized electronic health records data to make clinical predictions. I will repeat, no? there are already studies that by just using the electronic health records, they can already predict clinical prediction. Uh, they can already make clinical predictions. So one prominent area of focus has been identifying a patient uh, at risk for hospital admission, readmission within 30 days of discharge. Uh, and this become re uh, particularly relevant uh, due to the readmission reduction program no? uh, in the United States, no? which uh, financially uh, penalizes hospitals for having excessive readmissions. No? So that is uh, already happening in the United States. No? They penalize the hospital for excessive readmissions. No? Uh, here in the Philippines, we don't uh, have that uh, uh, law yet. No? So that is why in the United States, uh, they are using uh, their electronic health uh, data to predict which patients we're at high risk for the admission, and this can help hospitals identify patients who may need additional support or intervention after discharge to prevent them for, from needing to uh, return no, to the hospital. Uh, data analytics has been uh, used in several studies to predict healthcare use and patient outcome. No? Uh, so here are some uh, examples, no? healthcare utilization and primary care uh, panel size. No? Uh, studies have used data analytics to forecast how much healthcare resources a patient or a group of patients might use. No? It is not possible to do that no? or to estimate the size of a primary care physician's patient panel. Another one is what we call the uh, risk adjusting mortality rates for different uh, patient level. We call it hospital mortality rate. So analytics uh, are now being used to adjust mortality rates for different patient uh, risk level, giving a more accurate picture of hospital performance. So we are talking about yeah, hospital performance. If you want to, to rate uh, the hospital performance. So data analytics can also identify patients who are likely to experience complication after surgery, allowing for preventative uh, measures to be uh, put in place. And uh, data analytics can be used to measure and evaluate uh, different aspects of uh, care delivery from adherence to clinical guidelines to efficiency of care processes. So these are uh, the very important application of data analytics in healthcare studies. So as I told you, electronic health data are already being used okay, uh, for uh, data analytics. So it is now being used, electronic health record, it is now also being used to predict patient mortality, no? mortality. So uh, uh, your electronic, the electronic health record uh, data can be used to uh, predict uh, patient mortality rates following a heart attack. No? Uh, for example, after the patient having a myocardial infarction, so this helps in assessing the severity of the condition and enables doctors to make informed treatment decisions. Uh, another one, no, electronic health record uh, data supplemented with the patient similarity data has been used to predict mortality rates in the ICU, no, in the intensive care units. Uh, predictive models, uh, like that no, can uh, help clinicians identify high-risk patients and potentially adjust uh, the uh, care no, that you are giving to your patient. No? So mortality during hospital hospitalization or a one year after hospitalization 
can also be predicted using the electronic health record. Another one, no? electronic health record are also being utilized to confirm findings no? from randomized control trials. So for instance, the virtual data warehouse project of the Health Maintenance Organization Research Network has successfully used electronic health record data to link childhood, uh, childhood obesity to hyperglycemia no? during pregnancy. Uh, similarly, using uh, data from the United Kingdom, no? United Kingdom uh, General Practice Research Database, uh, researchers uh, were able to confirm the results of the Women's Health Initiative in other cardiovascular disease trials. No? So those are the importance of uh, your electronic health record to confirm the findings in the randomized control trial. So large, large uh, databases of health records, like for example, the, uh, the UK, United Kingdom, uh, general practice, uh, the, the UK, UK GPRD, no? the United Kingdom general, general practice research uh, uh, database, Okay, uh, they are being utilized to accelerate research. They are being used to determine risk factors for uh, diseases like, uh, for example, uh, pancreatic or uh, gastro uh, gastroesophageal cancer, and uh, to replicate you know, cohort studies about risk for blood clot events more efficiently. So another one, we have the OMOP. Uh, OMOP means the Observational Medical Outcome Partner Partnership has applied risk identification methods to records from many large healthcare institutions with uh, reasonable success, though with some trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. So utilization of large health uh, record databases in uh, research is very important. The genome-wide association studies and uh, the genome-wide association studies represent two novel methods. Uh, there are the two methods used in healthcare data analysis to what? To link patient phenotype with the genotype. No? The genome-wide association studies involve examining a genome-wide set of genetic variants in different individuals to see if any variant is associated with a trait. No? So in the context of healthcare, it might involve linking specific findings from electronic health records the phenotypes with the geno genomic data, no? or we call it the genotype. So for instance, there are two, uh, there are a group of uh, uh, scientists develop methods for your uh, genome-wide uh, association studies within the electronic medical records uh, and genomics, we call it the eMERGE network. And that network combines electronic health record system and biorepositories data, you know, making it possible to validate existing research and generate new findings. Uh, for example, uh, they managed to identify genomic variants associated with uh, certain health conditions, like, for example, uh, uh, atrioventricular conduction abnormalities. Uh, another example is variation in the red blood cell traits. Uh, another example, uh, blood cell count abnormalities and thyroid disorders. So those are uh, examples of uh, diseases no? or abnormalities that uh, you can easily identify using the electronic medical records and genomic network. 
So this is also true with the uh, uh, with the phenom-wide association studies. Okay, uh, the 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 PWAS no, or the phenom-wide association in study uh, inverts the GWAS methodology, you know, starting with the phenotype and then looking for associated genotype. So this is the reverse of the uh, uh, GWAS. No? Okay, so you have to understand that uh, genome-wide association studies and Phenom-wide association studies are powerful tools you know, in modern biomedical research. By associating specific genotypes and phenotypes, uh, they already provide opportunities for the discovery of new genetic determinants of health and diseases. So the validation of previous research findings and the advancement of personalized medicine will uh, also important you know, in uh, determining you know, or, or to discover genet new genetic uh, uh, health, uh, new genetic diseases. You know. Now, research is growing around using electronic health record in other clinical data uh, to predict patient outcomes, make diagnosis, and determine who can participate in research studies. While it's clear no, uh, that this data can be useful, it's important no, to show that these methods can lead to better outcomes for patients or healthcare systems. There are a few studies no, that have been done to evaluate this. No? Uh, some have found benefit like a reduction in the readmission, uh, disease, uh, a decrease in the hospital acquired pressure ulcers, decrease in the hospital mortality uh, using electronic health record based tools. No? Okay. One study uh, even showed a tool <clears throat> that could lead to earlier cancer diagnosis. On the other hand, some studies found limited or no benefit. For example, a readmission risk tool no, uh, didn't work for all patients. And another study showed an automated prediction model didn't affect readmission rates, even though it can identify patients at risk for readmission. So this method is not yet perfect, but... Uh, the potential, no? the potential of using electronic health record and clinical data for predicting outcomes uh, and uh, guiding care is needed to understand and maximize uh, their impact. No? Can you follow? Still there? Yes. Okay. Now, some healthcare systems are leading the way in using uh, data analytics. For example, uh, the Geisinger uh, health system. No? Uh, they created a universal data structure that has implored patient care in several ways. It has helped detect and treat uh, sepsis early, monitored and controlled the cost and outcome of surgeries, and uh, ensure that patients receive proper follow-up care. Another noteworthy application uh, focus on children with uh, cerebral uh, palsy. So by implementing a learning health system, they significantly improve care, you know, leading to a 43% reduction in hospital days, 30% reduction in the visits to the emergency department, and an impressive 210% uh, decrease in the healthcare cost. So that the, I think this is the most important. So it, it just uh, shows us that uh, uh, how effective uh, data analytics is. No? They can improve patient outcomes and reduce cost. No? Now, the role of people who work in uh, analytics specifically in the field of uh, informatics is uh, crucial 
it is crucial. No? Uh, informatics is uh, the use of computers and statistical methods uh, to manage and understand information. So these individuals, uh, we call it informaticians. No? So they use their skills to collect, understand, and analyze health and biological data, and then apply what they found to help improve health outcomes. So this kind of work is what? It is considered one of the most important jobs in the century. Uh, informatics play a very important role in healthcare and biology. It helps us to collect, understand lots of different types of data in various fields such as genomics, uh, healthcare, and public health. And this data can be overwhelming, but the tools, remember the tools that are especially the machine learning no, used by informaticians can help us make sense of uh, all the data. Uh, we, I'm pertaining, I am referring to the big data that we try to analyze. So data science, no, that is a part of informatics. It's not just uh, about using computers or statistics to understand something. No? It's about knowing. No? Again, it's about knowing how to handle different types of data and how to use it, how to use it in useful ways. No? So this includes skills. No? The data scientists should have the skills uh, how to use or how to uh, manipulate machine no? uh, for the machine learning, no? to use the computer for machine learning. Uh, a type of artificial intelligence, okay? It is also important to, uh, for the informaticians to know what type of artificial intelligence that will be used uh, and allows computers uh, to learn and make decisions from the data. So that is the reason why uh, data science or data scientist, it is not just about computers or statistics. Now, the McKinsey uh, consulting firm no, report uh, suggests there's a huge demand for individuals with strong analytical skills, estimating a need for 140,000 to 190,000 individuals in the United States alone. No? So uh, you have to look on the slide. This is a very important slide uh, that might uh, change your uh, career path. No? You might go to uh, being, uh, if you want uh, before to become a cardiologist, maybe you can change your career path. No? You, may, you might want to become a uh, informatician. No? Because uh, as I've told you, uh, there are a, a huge demand for uh, uh, informaticians. Now, analysis from the UK you know, shows uh, similar trends. Uh, the SES a data uh, analytics firm estimated that by 2018, you no, know, actually this data is uh, 2018, you know, there are 6,400 organizations will employ 100 or more analytic staffs. No? So that's why uh, there is a uh, greater demand no, for uh, informaticians. No? Now, the US National Institute of Health has acknowledged the importance of big data skills for conducting biomedical research. And uh, actually in 2013, it held a workshop to discuss enhancing training in uh, big data among researchers. The participants agreed that such training should include skills in uh, quantitative sciences, uh, domain expertise, teamwork, and data management and sharing. Uh, they also emphasized no, that trainees should have exposure to real world data problems and data sets for practical experience. Long-term uh, training was seen as necessary for those aiming to become experts and 
leaders in uh, data science. So drawing from various reports, a general agreement is uh, emerging on the essential skills required for biomedical and health informaticians working in analytics and uh, big data. Uh, so uh, these are the essential skills for biomedical and health informaticians, programming, statistics, domain knowledge, uh, communications. So in order for education in informatics to stay relevant, programs need to incorporate topics like uh, analytics. So that's why I incorporated in our, actually this is a basic, informa basic uh, medical informatics, uh, yet I still uh, uh, incorporate this uh, topic in order for you to have some knowledge about uh, healthcare data analytics. Uh, data analytics holds significant potential for enhancing healthcare, now ranging from personal health to healthcare delivery and uh, biomedical research. This increasingly volume of uh, uh, clinical and research data combined with the methods for analyzing this data. This could uh, lead to significant improvements in, uh, in the data analytics. No? There is a need, no? although there's a need to enhance the quality and completeness of the data and to demonstrate that it can uh, effectively address real world uh, problems. Okay, now in a recent study, some recommendations were made for the practical use of uh, clinical data, which could be applied broadly to data analytic, uh, analytics tasks. No? Uh, so these are the, these are the recommendations. Uh, uh, data best practices, evaluate data, data management, quality assessment, uh, reporting standards, adapting best evidence approach, optimize informatics expertise and research agenda. Okay, ask an answerable question. Is the question we're asking answerable with the data we have? So that is the question. Find the best evidence. In this case, the best evidence is the electronic health record data needed to answer the question. No? Critically appraise uh, the evidence. No? No? Uh, the, the data, uh, the question is, does the data really uh, answer the questions? Are there any factors that might distort the results? No? Another question, no? uh, can the data be applied to, this, to the specific patient or situation? So this, this approach no? emphasizes uh, using data carefully and critically, might, uh, much like uh, how scientific studies are used in uh, evidence-based uh, medicine. Uh, due to the, these are the key points of my lecture. No? Uh, due to the increased use of electronic health records, there's a lot more health data available now. No? Data analytics platforms can look at data from many different sources, like uh, patient records, uh, DNA data, hospital billing systems, and uh, management systems. Okay, we need, no? we need analytics to turn all the raw data into useful information and knowledge that can help improve patient care. New ways uh, of delivering healthcare like uh, uh, accountable care organizations will heavily rely on analytics to understand and improve both the financial and clinical aspects of healthcare. Okay, so remember, no, remember there is a big, big demand, no, big demand for people who are good at analyzing data in healthcare and having knowledge in informatics. Take note on that, no. So it is really important 
for these individuals uh, to uh, pro, uh, they, are, they are very important uh, uh, professionals that they are uh, or they are actually in demand at this uh, moment. No? So to to make the most of the data analytics in healthcare, several things need to be in place. No, we need strong electronic health records and other sources of clinical data so that we have plenty of high quality information to analyze. That's number one. Number two, we need to follow data standards and make sure our systems can work together. No? And this helps ensure we can share and combine data from uh, different sources. Third, no, we need what? We need this one, no, the health information exchange system. No? It is a process that allows healthcare professionals to appropriately access and securely share patients' medical information electronically because the data will be useless if you cannot share all the data that you can uh, that you get from the that you analyze, no? if you cannot share that to your colleagues or to the other uh, scientists or to other health professionals. Okay, our systems need to be easy to use. Remember that uh, those who are going to use the system, they are non techy personnel no? or non techy user. So we need to create an easy to use system so that doctors, and nurses, no? uh, it will, they, they will find it easy to enter data correctly. Okay, we also need the data that we collect to be complete. That's very important. Aside from being complete, it should be accurate. We need to carry out research to find out the best ways to use data analytics to improve health outcomes. And lastly, we need skilled people no so uh, you are you are still in your first year medicine probably you can uh, think about this no okay because they need skilled people that can uh, uh, explain no that can explain that can use the tools uh, and then explain the results okay so they help everyone understand what the data is telling us about how to improve healthcare. Okay, so that's my last slide. Any question? <laughs>